great intercessor, our own Medikai. Thank you for what you are doing in our midst. Hey, 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 all the spices, all the fragrances that were bestowed upon Esther before she was selected for the seat of authority, the seat of power, the seat of influence. May we be bathed in them today as your mouthpiece and your daughter speaks to us. Mighty God, thank you for this nine months of preparation that you have put us all through for this next level, for this next... Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ratalaba Sokoto. Let it be marked by heaven itself. Jakatarabos. Down here on earth. My, thank you, Jesus. We give you all the praise. We thank you. We thank you for every royal diadem here and those not here. Just touch them where they are, oh God. What they need. Ha, ha, ha. Even as they listen to this. Even the royal diadems who will listen to this in the future, God, let the same oil, the same anointing, yaka, 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 of royalty, hallelujah, hallelujah, of Isaiah 62, verse 3, be a po, bestowed upon them in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening, ladies. Uh, thank you for joining the session today. Um, so our speaker today is um, Sis Natasha Tash, the stylist, and she is going to be talking to us about um, crowning. Crowning will be our theme today. So I hope you've come and you're expectant and you're ready for um, the oil that will be shared with us this evening. So, Sistash, I'll hand over to you. Thank you very much, Ashley. Good evening, ladies. Good evening. I hope you're all well, wherever you are. And I pray that you've had a wonderful, wonderful weekend. So today we are going to be talking about the crowning, the moment that we've all been waiting for for the last nine months of this journey. It's coming to the head. We are in that season where we are saying, we are coming to the close of this pregnancy, but we are preparing for the birthing of this baby that has been cooking and incubating in our spiritual wombs where God has been speaking to us, pruning us, preparing us, guiding us, leading us to this moment of our lives where we are becoming all that God has created us to be, where we are stepping into that season where we are saying, God, here I am, use me, send me for those great and mighty exploits that you have ready, that you have prepared for such a time as this. I am allowing myself to be pruned and be prepared for this moment so that I can be a vessel of glory. I can incubate the power, the presence, and the glory of God for what you want to do on earth according to your will, your plan, and your purpose. So this is what we are going to be talking about. We are now preparing ourselves for the biggest chapter of our lives where we actually step out, where we're no longer drinking milk, but we are saying, God, we're ready to chew bones. And so we are stepping out into the world and saying, God, let me be your mouthpiece. Let me be your eyes. Let me be your ears. And I hope and pray that you are ready for this chapter and season of your life. I welcome you to, I welcome you to the crowning session, to our preparation for our graduation, for when the new royal diadems get to wear their own crown like I'm wearing mine today. See, my ceremony happened a couple of years ago. And it stands as a reminder every time, even when I'm in my down seasons, it stands as a reminder for me to say, God has called me and has an assignment for me. And so I must never lose that direction and that vision that he has given me to walk in that purpose. And so tonight, that is exactly 
what we are going to be doing. And we are going, our hearts are open and they are prepared for what God has for us tonight. I hope you are excited. Please do ask questions. Please add if you have something that you would like to add. But tonight is going to be a night where we prepare ourselves for the kingdom assignment, for the royal daughters that we truly are. And we are going to step out prepared, ready, and equipped to do that which God has called us. Hallelujah. So I am going to give a definition of crowning. It says representing a level of surpassing achievement, attainment, and supreme crowning accomplishment. So this is speaking of a higher level of saying you are now at the top, at the summit of whatever it is that you're doing. Everything is now underneath you. You are now at the top because you, 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 you've achieved, you've attained that which you need to attain for that. And this is where we are as daughters of, of the kingdom, where we are saying we are no longer going to be those that are moved by our circumstances. We have come to the top of the mountain because we know who we stand on. We stand on solid ground. Why is that? What, what gives us that confidence? to actually declare and say, this is who we are. This is how we walk and this is how we do things. It is because the son of God himself had to wear a crown of pain and die on the cross of Calvary so that we could wear the crown of glory. Christ wore thorns woven for him by the soldiers as a way of mocking him. But what they didn't realize was he was wearing those thorns so that our shame, our shame, everything that we, the enemy has used against us to bring, to bring shame, he carried that at the top of his head so that we can be redeemed, so that we can be brought back to Christ, so that we can declare Isaiah 63 that says you will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of God. You see, if, crown, if Christ had not worn that crown of thorns, we would not have been redeemed back into the kingdom of, of Christ, of God. And so we could not have become a crown of splendor. So we are sparkling. Each and every one of us is a sparkling crown in the hand of God. But you see, the enemy has told us so many lies. He has brought condemnation. He has told us that we are not good enough. We have carried the shame of inadequacy. We have carried the shame of abuse. We have carried the shame of rejection and abandonment and all sorts of things. But you see, that, that crown that Christ wore before he hung on the cross of Calvary, he carried that. He took it to the top, to the summit, to declare victory so that you and I can shine. You and I can become the crown of splendor in the, in the hands of the Lord. John 19, 2 verse 3 tells us that the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it in, on his head. They clothed him in purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of Jews. And they slapped him in the face. I just want us to take a moment and reflect. That moment when Christ is, they are mocking him and saying, Hail, King of Jews. He has this crown because they know that he is a king. They just cannot fathom and understand it because this is not a physical process. This is a spiritual activity that is happening for the redemption of the sons and daughters of Christ. And so the enemy is trying to bring mockery into that moment so that you and I cannot know and understand that we are of royal blood. Because the enemy wants us to live defeated because he cannot afford for us to walk in the dominion that God declared when he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. It says we were given dominion and authority to rule and to reign. 
But if you don't know that you are of royal blood and kingship, then how can you begin to make decrees and declarations and that your word comes to pass? Because when a king decrees a thing, I think maybe it might be my network then. I don't know. Is anyone else struggling with their network? No. I can hear you, sis. You just disappeared just for a minute, but then you, you okay. came back on and you're, you're right. fine now. Yeah. Loud and okay. clear. All right. Okay, thank you very much. So that moment that the enemy, that, that, that moment that God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. The enemy knew that there was trouble when we open our mouths and decree and declare things. Because when we speak, we are created from the image and likeness of God. And so when we speak things, they have to come to pass. They have to happen the way that we speak them. And so what he has done, he has made sure that we don't understand our positioning. We don't understand that we are daughters of the king of kings. And so that rejection is what has been speaking in our hearts. Because we are so broken and bruised by it. That is what we meditate on. That those words that broke us when we were told that we were not good enough. So we can't even position ourselves in places of authority and dominion because we are struggling with the imposter syndrome and we're saying, not me. We can't be like Isaiah who said, send me, Lord, here I am. Instead, we are hiding behind the scenes and we're saying, not me. I'm not ready for that. I can never. How can I be chosen for such a time as this? How can I be doing these great things? And just to, just to give you a, a, something that happened to me yesterday, and I was in awe. I said, God, who am I? Why? Because the enemy has lied to me over and over for years that you'll never be good enough. We had a community meeting where they were setting up a committee for our neighborhood. And so I just thought, let me go as part of the community to hear what they are going to say. And when I got there, I had, I had no idea and plan that I would even be, I, I just went to hear what was happening. The meeting went on and they went on to choose members that will be on the committee and how God will set us up. I took a stool from my house because I thought oh, everyone will have bring their camp chair. It's in the park. So I might as well bring my little stool so I can sit. But when I got there, I was the only one who had a stool there. And then I put my stool down. I, I sat down. The meeting went on. And when they were now choosing committee members, one lady nominates me. And I was like, wow, okay. And then another gentleman who didn't even realize that I had been nominated to be on the committee says, I nominate the lady who's sitting on the chair. I was like, okay. And another gentleman nominates me because he hadn't heard the other two had already nominated. So in that meeting, I was nominated by three different people that had no idea that I had already been nominated. And at that point, everyone just said, you know, pun with all the pun intended, you are, you might as well be our chair lady because I was sitting on the chair and that chair got me to be nominated in this committee because I stood out. And this is the moment where God is saying, I am crowning you so that you stand out because a moment of crowning is a moment of standing out. It is a moment of stepping out and saying, I have a role and a duty that I now need to step in with authority and dominion because I no longer just operate as an imposter. I no longer just operate as a person who's just not caring what's happening. I, 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 I hold the royal scepter. 
I, I, I have on my head a crown because I am a daughter of Zion, chosen and appointed for such a time as this. And so there is a stepping out that I need to do, but I need to understand that I've been crowned. And so ladies, this is my call to you for the last nine months. Every Sunday we've been meeting and words of encouragement to sharpen you, to equip you, to prepare you for this coming moment of your life have been spoken over the nine months. You have carried the pregnancy. You have been preparing for this moment. But what does it mean? Many of us have been pregnant. It starts by conceiving the seed. You carry the seed inside of you. It is deposited inside of you. You carry it. And when you carry the seed, it begins to germinate. It begins to grow inside of you. We've been in the growing season because God deposited the seed. That unction that caused you to want to be part of royal diadems was the seed that was planted in your spiritual womb for where you were going. And so this seed has been growing inside of you. And month by month by month, you've been nourishing it with the word of God. You've been nourishing it with the teachings that you have been receiving because there is growth that is happening within you. And sometimes you might not see it. Sometimes it might feel like, God, is anything even happening inside? Because you see, a seed has to be buried for it to come forth, for it to produce a harvest. And this has been a season of incubating. You've been hidden. You've been covered so that you can grow and become all that God has been preparing you to become. And I'm reminded of the story of King Charles. King Charles was prepared from the time he was born. He had to learn the royal protocols, everything that he needed to learn to prepare to be a king. There was no guarantee that he was going to be a king, but he still needed to be prepared because in his mind, in his head, in everything that he, he was, he knew that at some point, if anything happens to the queen, I have to be ready to step up and take position. But many of us, we find ourselves not ready, not equipped to take up our position that God has called us to because life is happening and there's so many things going on. And so we are distracted. We are not prepared. And when that time comes, because it always comes, then we find ourselves wanting. We find ourselves in a place where we are not ready. We are not prepared. And so we don't know what to do. But King Charles had been prepared. And the queen lived for many years. But eventually one day, he had to become the king. And I watched the queen's funeral and I was in awe because they knew exactly what they needed to do. Every process, every, everything was structured and it was ready. And the king knew, the, 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 the king in waiting knew his role and his responsibility. The same way that Jesus was prepared for 30 years here on earth. He was not the Christ then, but he was here for 30 years to be prepared so that he can become the Christ that he is today. But there was a process that he needed to go through. There was an equipping that needed to happen to prepare him for the cross. He could have easily come in one day and said, oh, God said, okay, my son, I need you to die for the for the people, you arrive on earth today, tomorrow you're going to the cross. But it wasn't so. He had to be born. He had to go 
through every process from birth into being a toddler, into being a teenager, into being a young adult, into being a man, and into his ministry. And these nine months, ladies, are now the crowning of what has already been happening in your life because God says, I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. I ordained you. So tonight, I want us to believe and go back and actually just thank God for choosing us for such a time as this, for choosing us for this generation, for the purpose that you carry because this world needs it. What is inside of you, this world needs. And so as you prepare for your coronation, I want you to know these things. A coronation is a place is an act of placement or bestowal of a crown upon a monarch's head. This is just a spiritual announcement that is happening. The day you were born, God announced you already because you came in crying. You made an announcement that you are now here. You have arrived. There was a declaration in the atmosphere on the day of your birth. That first cry was the announcement of you being a monarch, a chosen one, an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. And so you, when you made that cry, you made an, an announcement on earth, you made an announcement to the devil, you made an announcement to the heavens. And so the enemy was pursuing you, but God was also covering you. And God says, this is now your time to step out and do that which you announced the day you were born. You didn't know it then, but now you do. And so you are now making another announcement of saying, that which I have been learning, that which I have been, I was being prepared for. I am stepping into it and I am going to adjudicate the, 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 the assignment of God on earth as it is in heaven. This is an announcement that we are making again in the realm of the earth to the enemy and to the heavens to say, here I am, Lord, use me for what you have called me to do, to fulfill. I will not keep quiet. I will not be silent. I am a daughter of the kingdom and I am going to rule and to reign. And so the resources, the things that have been given, I am going to use them to make sure that I bring change in this earth. So this is a, this is a ceremony. When a coronation happens, it says, it, it's a ceremony which marks the formal investiture of a monarch with regal power. So the power is already inside of them. The authority is already inside of them, the respect. King Charles was always treated as royalty. Even though he had not taken the position of king, he was still respected and honored as royalty. And when he finally took his seat as king, authority and power was now upon him. You see, there are certain things that God has bestowed upon us, but because of the training and the equipping that we have to go through, that power is not yet active, yet it is there. It's like a volcano. It's lying dormant, but one day it will erupt. Until Christ died for our sins, 
The day that he went on the cross and he rose, it's not that he didn't have power. He did. But it had just not been activated. And this ceremony is an activation of who God has called you to be. And sometimes it might feel like after the ceremony, but God, I don't feel different in my spirit. I don't feel. It's not about feeling, it's about knowing. So when you begin to speak, you know, you speak with authority, you speak with dominion. It's not about how you feel. It's about the power that has been put in your mouth. Because when you speak, whether you are feeling emotional, you are unhappy, if you speak the wrong thing, it shall come to pass because you are a daughter of Zion, you are a daughter of the king of kings. And when you decree, it shall come to pass. And so we must be mindful because there is a power that is upon us. And so when we move, we must know that we are moving with authority and dominion from the, from the heavens. And so we have a royal crowning of a royal person. They become the head of a state and they are equipped and given what we call crown jewels. When I was looking at the British monarch, they talked about the St. Edward's crown. And this crown has been in the royal family for centuries, for years. It actually was started with St. Edward's in the 13th century. And then Every monarch who was, 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 was crowned would have to wear this, this crown. And it is not to be worn on any other occasion except on the coronation. So it is so significant that it separates your day, their day-to-day -day activity with, with that crown. They can wear other crowns on any other occasion, but this particular one is just for their crowning, for that ceremony. And this for me was quite interesting. I was like, wow. This is, you know, just watching the royal family is such an intriguing and interesting um, thing to do because you get to learn so much about, about kingdom, about how things actually happen in the kingdom. Christ had to wear that crown of thorns. That was the finality of it. When we look at the kingdom business, because he is the only one who could stand in the gap for us. There is no other who needs to wear that crown. That special occasion happened for us already so that we can become the royal diadems. We can rule and reign with authority knowing that that crown of thorns carried us to the other side to wear the crown of glory. Amongst the crown jewels, they have the scepter, which is a symbolic, symbolic ornamental rod held by the monarch at coronation. It is derived from the shepherd's staff and the two gold scepters were made. Um, there are two of them. You'll see the pictures when we, when we share, when, I, when Sis Ashley shares the PDF. And for me, that was amazing. You see, the king extended the royal scepter to Queen Esther as a sign of favor. It was the rod. When they said the shepherd, I remembered Moses. 
when he lifted the rod and opened the Red Sea. And today, I believe that God has put that same power in our hands. When we lift up our hands and we begin to speak and decree and declare, because God says this, when Christ died, the spirit of God came upon us. So we actually have the authority of heaven living inside of us. The power of heaven, it is no longer just about carrying the, the, the scepter. It is not about carrying the shepherd's staff because that's where the power would flow because the Holy Spirit had not come upon us yet. But today we have the Holy Spirit himself. And so we are an authority because the power of God is inside of us. And they have the orb. And they say, it is a Christian symbol of authority since the Middle Ages. It is used on coins, iconography, and with a scepter as a royal regalia. So there's certain royal regalia that the king has to carry and has to hold and has to wear to show that he is different from everybody else. He is not just like everybody else. He is the king, or this is the queen. And as much as we are doing this symbolic crowning of wearing the crown, I want you to remember the crown that you are putting on, the regalia that you are taking upon from here on is the Holy Spirit being aware and conscious that is your regalia, the spirit of God living inside of you. And so when you move and when you walk and when you do things, you are no longer afraid because you know that the spirit of God, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And so you can stand in authority and power and decree and declare things and they shall come to pass. Because you embody, you are clothed in the power and the glory of God. They literally say the orb represents holding the world in one's hand. So it is a significant declaration that the king is saying to say, I am ruling and I'm reigning and the, the world is in my hand. And God has given us a command to say, go to the north, south, east, and west and spread my word. So he's saying to us, I have given you, I have given you the ends of the earth. And I'm just being reminded right now in Psalm chapter two, I'll quickly read it. God says to David in verse, in, in verse 7, he said to me, you are my son today and I have become your father. Ask me and I will make the nations your inheritance and the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron and you will dash them to pieces like pottery. God was saying to David, I have put the world in your hands. I have given you authority. They are yours. I am today, I have become your father and you have become my son. And so when the king is crowned, it is a significant declaration of saying, you now have rule in this kingdom. You can rule, you can reign, you can decree, and what you say, you have become the king. And this moment for us is God saying, my daughters, rise up 
as my royal diadem. I have an assignment in this hour for you. And I need you to be my mouthpiece. I need you to take the ends of the earth. They will become your inheritance. They will become your possession because they are things that I need to do, move, shift, break, build. But I need you. Will you stand up? Will you, will you arise? Will you clothe yourself in my power? Will you clothe yourself in my glory? Will you clothe yourself in who I am? Will you allow me to embody you in my glory so that you can go and do that which I have called you to rule, to reign, and take dominion? Because when we are ready to do that, we are birthing the purpose, the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. You see, it is a significant moment in our lives such that even when you are birthing a, re a baby in the physical, they have a moment where they say, the baby has crowned. The baby is ready to come out. And look at these two moments where a royal person is being crowned into a place of position and authority. It is called the crowning. But when a birthing is happening, it also there is a moment where it is called crowning because it is a moment of possession. It is a moment of stepping into a new dimension. It is a moment of birthing. Because when a baby is being born, they say this is when you can see the top of a baby's head through the opening of your vagina. This moment happens during the second stage of labor. When you push, when you push and deliver your new baby, when you push and deliver your newborn, once your baby crowns, you push out the rest of the body. There is a pushing that we're going to have to do in this moment because crowning does not come easy. It is fought because the enemy knows you are about to birth the will and the assignment of God. Because when we go back to the Bible in Genesis, we are told that the serpent will be after the woman's seed. So that which you are incubating, the enemy is already waiting for that crowning in that moment, because it is a life and death moment, you have to make a choice where you say, I am going to push. It is painful. Because when you are being prepared and you are carrying this seed, you are in a place of pain. You are laboring for what you are going to hold. That's why they call it labor. And when I was looking up in, on the internet, there was a section that said, what, crown, what does crowning feel like in the natural when a woman is giving birth? They say you may feel like a lot of pressure is on your rectum and you need to pull. And this for me was amazing because it reminded me that this journey that we've been on, we have been pruned. There are things that, act, that had to be removed outside of us. So it's like a form of detoxing that has been happening within us. And even in the moment of birthing, there is a deeper detox that's happening because we cannot go into who God has called us to be, carrying our old selves. Your baby's exit may stretch and irritate your vaginal nerves and tissue between your vagina and your perineum. It is an uncomfortable process. It is a painful process. They say it may burn, tingle, and sting as your newborn makes their way out. Some women call this feeling a ring of fire birth. 
you've been in the fire. You've been burning. You've been feeling the squeeze. You've been doubting. You've been afraid because you are thinking, can I carry? Can I be the one who will birth what God has put inside of me? It is a scary place to be in. It is a scary moment to be in because it comes with a lot. To whom much is given, much is required. A lot will be required from you from this moment forth. And sometimes we don't feel good enough. We feel inadequate. We want to run away because we think it's too big. But I want to remind you, you are the woman for the job. You are the one that God has called for this assignment. And you will run your race and you will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. Because God himself has equipped you. He has handpicked you. He has crowned you. See, the finished work of the cross of Calvary speaks over your life. So there is no need for you to be afraid. Tonight, let that spirit of fear, let that spirit of inadequacy, let that imposter syndrome break in the name of Jesus. Because you are the woman of the, for the job. You are the Esther. You see, Mordecai said to Esther, don't think sitting back there and keeping quiet, help will not come from elsewhere. That assignment that is upon your life, if you sit on it, God will raise even rocks to cry out. So you have chosen to align with heaven, to partner with heaven for this assignment. You must know that you have been equipped. You have been given the crown jewels for the assignment that you need to do. You're not doing it in your own power. You're not doing it in your might. You're not doing it in your own authority. For it is not by might nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. So I break that spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. I break that spirit of limitation in the name of Jesus. You will arise and you will walk in your purpose in Jesus' mighty name. You will arise and become the Esther of this generation in Jesus' name. You will arise and become the Deborah in Jesus' mighty name. Arise, daughter of Zion, for your time has come in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We thank you that the this moment of birthing, this moment of crowning, we are yielding to your power, your glory, your presence. And we are saying as your daughter's mighty God, we thank you that you have prepared us. We thank you that you have ordained us for this moment. We thank you that you have chosen us in the name of Jesus. We will no longer be afraid. For the spirit of God is upon us. The spirit of that raised Christ from death is upon us. Let it begin to resurrect every dead destiny over your daughters in the mighty name of Jesus. I begin to declare an arising, an awakening right now in Jesus' name. Let every dry bone receive the breath of God. Let the fire of God begin to move over your life, that every lukewarmness is removed and there is a burning and there is a staring and there is a fire that is going on in you. Let the revival of God begin to move over your life in this season, in this moment, that you will begin to move as a royal diadem in the hand of the living God, that you will begin to sparkle. Let every veil of darkness that was over your life be removed in the name of Jesus, for you will shine and you will radiate for your star will shine in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you tonight that our stars will shine, mighty God. That we will stand as ambassadors for the kingdom of God. That we will stand as daughters of Zion. And that when we decree and decree a thing, it shall come to pass. For you have given us authority and dominion to rule, to reign. And so we stand in that authority. We stand in that power. 
to break yokes of bondage, uh, to set the captives free in the name of Jesus, uh, to decree healing and healing shall begin to flow. Mighty God, I thank you that we are a generation of women that are rising up, uh, that we are not by, moved by circumstances. Uh, we are not moved by situations. Uh, we thank you, mighty God, that we look uh, to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, and that as we move as daughters, uh, that we move in power, we move in authority. May the power of God be upon us. Uh, I decree Isaiah 11 upon your daughters, uh, that the spirit of the living God is upon us, uh, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and power, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord mighty God, that as we move in the power and the authority of God, that kingdoms will begin to change, that things will begin to change in our communities, in our homes, in our families, in our generation, mighty God. Every generational cycle, every generational curse, every national issue will begin to bow to the name of Jesus as we rise up and open our mouths and decree the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. And at the mention of the name of Jesus, let every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, uh, that we stand and decree of your goodness and greatness uh, in this land of the living in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, I thank you for every royal diadem. I thank you that as we prepare for this crowning moment, mighty God, uh, that you have already gone before us. Uh, that which you spoke even before we were born in our mother's wombs, uh, let it begin to come to pass. Uh, let it begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Uh, let it manifest. I speak manifestation that we will do great and mighty exploits for the kingdom of heaven, Father. We thank you, Lord, that we will not be afraid, we will not be intimidated, we will not shrink back, but we will rise up in the name of Jesus, for the name of Jesus goes before us. The name of Jesus is the banner that covers us. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your covering. Thank you for divine wisdom. Thank you for divine health, that we may walk and move in power, in glory, for your name's sake. Father, we thank you for this session. We thank you for what you have done tonight, what you will continue to do in our lives, mighty God, that it will bring glory and honor to your name, that your name will be lifted up through us because we have yielded to your power and we stand as ambassadors for the kingdom. Thank you, mighty God. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. We pray, we ask, and we seal this in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In my last session, in my closing, I will be talking about stepping out. You see, when you are ready and you understand that you have been called, you prepare yourself to step out. And when, when you want to step out, see, I like to dress up. I'm sure you can all see that any occasion given, I will take the opportunity. So for any occasion that you're going to, whether it's a wedding, you're going to work, you're going for lunch, you put on the regalia for the moment. And so even in our stepping out, there are things that we need to adopt in who we are going to become and how we are going to do things from this moment on that we can no longer do things the same because there is a difference in how we operate now. We are daughters of Zion, we are royalty. So we must move with precision. We must move with clarity. We must move with intention because that is what separates us. That is what will separate us from everybody else. So how are we going to move as daughters? Presenting yourself as a woman ready to fulfill your purpose involves several key elements, confidence, clarity of purpose, self-awareness, and effective communication. Here are some steps to help you present yourself. Understand your purpose. Who am I? What have I been called to do? What, are, what is my assignment? What is my mission? What is my passion? What, is, what, what am I wanting to pursue? 
This is what this nine months has been unlocking in each one of us. We've been unlocking the jewels that were inside hidden. We've been mining for those to understand who has God called me to be? And when we do that, then we have, we, we, we built our confidence because we know who we are. We are daughters of the kingdom. We know our strengths. We know our weaknesses. We celebrate our successes and we learn from our failures because we know that God has prepared us. We are not perfect and we'll make mistakes. But when we learn from, the, from those and we go back to daddy and say, daddy, I missed the mark here. Please show me, help me, guide me. Talk to yourself. Believe in, the, in your ability to achieve what God has called you to do. How we present ourselves. When we are going to work, we present ourselves in a particular manner. Even as daughters of Zion, we need to dress appropriately. Choose outfits that make you feel confident. See, I was talking to my little one, my eight-year-old, I had been having a conversation with someone on the phone. And we were talking about heels. And we were just laughing and I said, oh, I love it when I wear heels. When I wear heels, my step changes. Like, I'm just like, hello, the queen is here. The walk is walking. The shoes are doing the thing. And so we finished the conversation. And my daughter, she's eight. She says to me, mommy, when I wear my heels, I feel exactly what you were describing. And I said, oh my word, I have birthed a mini me. And I can see myself in this little girl. And there is something that dressing well will do to your confidence. Because when you show up in the place, you, you are not worrying about, are they judging me? No, you're ready. You're not focusing on, on those things because you know you're prepared. And they say first impressions matter. I remember once going to a church and that's when I realized that in any scenario, any situation, people will always look at you and I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, they'll judge you according to how you're addressed. So they, were, they asked the new visitors and I was there me being me, I had dressed up my heels, pencil skirt, blazer, handbag. You know, when Sister Natasha dresses and walks, you think she has 10 million in a handbag that she's just walking around wanting to throw at everybody. And there was a couple that was there and they just dressed in casual clothes. And I paid attention and I noticed this. So they welcomed us and greeted us and the pastor then came and the first person he greeted was, was me. We talked, he asked me where I was from, what I was, what I did. We, we had a conversation for a while and then eventually went to greet the other couple. And he did not pay much attention to them. It was literally, hello, welcome, and goodbye. And he left. And for that moment, I thought to myself, what made me different from them? And clearly in my spirit, it was, your presentation made the difference. There are certain places that you'll go to that people will take you seriously just by the way you're dressed. Before you even say anything, before you even talk, before you even, just how you present yourself, doors will be opened for you. Because they say you take yourself seriously. So whatever it is that you want to do, you might, you, they believe that you take it seriously. 
And I've seen it over and over and over happening. And so ladies, let's present ourselves. We are ambassadors. When an ambassador of a nation shows up, they show up. You can see that this is the ambassador. They present themselves well. Effective communication. Speak clearly and confidently. Articulate your thoughts clearly. Active listening. Show genuine interest in others' perspectives. That builds rapport and demonstrates emotional intelligence. Let's have a spirit of continuous learning and growth, seeking knowledge, staying informed, seeking opportunities to learn and grow. Yes, this course might be finished for royal diadems, but there are other opportunities that are waiting for us. We can't just say, oh, I've done royal diadems and that's it, I'm done. Connect, network, build relationships with like-minded individuals. Surround yourself with people who support your goals and inspire you. Seek mentors, balance and self-care. Prioritize self-care. Healthy work-life balance. Take care of your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Set boundaries. Learn to say no when necessary to avoid burnout and stay focused on your purpose. It is not every assignment that you are called to. It is not every place that you are called to. As daughters of Zion, we need to learn boundaries. We need to know when to say yes. We need to seek our father to say, Lord, are you sending me here? Because we will get burnt out and hate ministry and hate the assignment because we don't know when to move and when not to move. It is not everything. You see, Elijah was burnt out and he ran and he started throwing a tantrum. He hid, oh Lord, I'm the only prophet left. And God said to him, I have 5,000 others who have not bowed to these idols. So when we don't know how to put boundaries, when we don't know how to take care of ourselves, we begin to murmur and we begin to complain. Oh God, this job, oh, this ministry business, this thing that you've got me doing. And God says, I've got other people who are ready and willing to do it. I want to do it with you. But if you're going to be complaining and crying, I will call an, I will call an Elisha and Elisha will take up your place. May we never get to a place where an Elisha takes up our place because we don't know how to take care of ourselves, because we complain and we, we murmur. Rest, even God himself rested. That's how important it is to him and for us. He wants us to rest. He created the heavens and the earth in six days and on the seventh day, God rested. Why would that be an important part of the process? Because fatigue, burnout, emotional. Jesus got burnt up after 40 days of fasting. That's ministry, intense. He had to have angels come and minister to him. He was burnt out. Even as he was getting ready to go to the cross, he was crying and angels came to strengthen him. That's how intense ministry can be. So ladies, let us take care of ourselves because we can't give from an empty place. We are able to give back, contribute to our communities, engage in activities, allow that allow us to volunteer, to mentor, share our knowledge by learning how to take care of ourselves. It is as important as going out and doing the ministry. Itself. Practical steps, be a proactive. Sister and I would always give us opportunities to minister on this platform. Let's continue taking up those opportunities. 
We need an intercessor. We need somebody to pray. Raise your hand. Be active. That's how we activate and keep our giftings moving and sharpened because we are constantly in that place of knowing that God is with us. Take initiative in projects. Demonstrate leadership quality. Seek advice. We are all sisters. We are connected. When you're feeling stuck, reach out to a sister. Sis, I'm struggling with this. We are the body of Christ. One can be the eyes, one can be the hands, one can be the ears. So if you're feeling stuck and like, oh, I, I can't see clearly, go to the eyes. Ah, prophetess, how, will, how can this work? So and so, how can I do this? Let us help each other. Engage, engage, make connections, real authentic connections. Social media, we now have social media. Use social media platforms to move the ministry that God has called in different ways. We, we are touching lives. We have an opportunity to touch lives in different. The world is literally in our hands on our phones. We, this is our orb. We can use this resource in our hand to just tap and press and touch lives, the crown jewels that we've been given, the resources that we have to do the things that God has called us to. Dress well, like I talked about. And finally, 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 ladies, it's time to do mighty exploits for the kingdom of God. Go ye forth, daughter of Zion. This is your time. This is your season. May God be with you. May God bless you. May he guide you. May he be with you in everything that he has equipped you and that you will fulfill your purpose and that your time will not be cut short in the name of Jesus. But you will empty yourself out even as Paul said, I have poured out. May we be daughters that will pour out everything that we have until we have fulfilled purpose for the glory of God. I love you and thank you so much for this opportunity and honor to share this journey, this nine month journey with you and to share this session with you. God bless you. Amen and amen. 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 Hmm.